We are now at page 6, proof of the mathematical calculations of the minimum terminology in the Quran. On this page, we are going to see the Quranic proof that the minimum plural of three that is mentioned in the Salat contact prayer on page 3 for all seven steps is actually three itself, and therefore perfectly connects to all three times the Salat contact prayer is mentioned with its time frames and the other triple connections which we'll see at the end of this page as a summary, inshallah. This page is mainly about Surah 18, Kaf, and I'm also going to prove that the subjects in this Surah are not random, but perfectly organized to meet a specific point. I started it here on the left from Surah 18 verse 9, as it's talking about the companions of the cave, the seven sleepers of Ephesus. So the story starts here as it says, Surah 18 verse 9. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Or do you think that the companions of the cave and the inscription were among our wondrous signs? When the young servants took refuge in the cave, they said, "Our Lord, grant us from yourself mercy and facilitate for us from our affair rationally." Rashada. Here, the word Rashada is extremely important to have the correct translated word. Most translations say the right way or the right guidance, but it's neither those. It's to rationalize. Look in any Arabic dictionary, the word to rationalize. And in case you don't know the correct definition in English, it means attempt to explain or justify behavior or an attitude with logical reasons, even if these are not appropriate. Interestingly, the phonetics, the English and Arabic language of this word are very similar. Rashada. Rationalize. Rational. Thus, the companions of the cave asked for something very interesting to God. Our Lord, grant us from yourself mercy and facilitate for us from our affair rationally. In other words, with logical reasoning. Similarly, this word facilitate, the dua here, repeats in Surah 18, the same Surah, verse 16. And Jesus says it in Surah 3, verse 49, and Surah 5, verse 110 making a bird, which I call this a Christian connection. Now, we are at the purpose. So Surah 18 again, verse 11. We then sealed over their ears the cave for a number of years. Then, we resurrected them to see which of the two parties could count the duration of their stay therein. So that is the purpose. The story unfolds between Surah 18, verse 13 to 15. And then, we get to verse 16. Here, which says, And when you abandon them, and what they worship besides God, then take refuge to the cave. Your Lord will spread out for you from His mercy, and will facilitate for you your affair at ease. It is very interesting how this companion is speaking, as he knows the future. Note, the next verse, Surah 18, verse 17, informs us that the cave was facing north, being among God's signs. It also tells us the importance of God's guidance, and a lack of of a rational guiding ally. Waliyan Murshida. This word Murshida is connected to the root word Rashada. Thus, the correct translation is rationally guiding ally, meaning an ally that uses logical reasoning. Keep this in mind, inshallah. Now, here on the right, I went to verse 19, which is titled, How many were they? And as God said in verse 12, seven verses before, the purpose, then we resurrected them to see which of the two parties could count the duration of their stay therein. So let's read the answer and note the minimum terminology. Likewise, we resurrected them that they may question between them. A speaker, minimum one, among them said, How long have you been here? They said, minimum three, the first party, We have been here one day or part of the day. The next group said, They said, minimum three, second party, your Lord knows best how long we've stayed here. So let us send one of you with this silver coin of yours to the city. Let him fetch the cleanest food and buy some for us. Let him keep a low profile and attract no one's attention. This is the verse of the mathematical calculations of the minimum terminology of the Quran that will prove that the minimum plural terminology can be precisely referring to three and not more. However, depending on the verse, it could mean more than three. This logical reasoning will prove the verses in Surah 2, verse 125, and Surah 22, verse 26, concerning the contact prayer Salat, physical motions on page 3, which were referred to as 
plural minimum three is exactly three as it's connected perfectly with all the other three mentioned connections we saw, like the contact pair name, the time frames, and so on. Therefore, here in Surah 18, verse 19, it says clearly that we resurrected them, that they may question between them. A speaker among them said, the speaker is the Arabic word ilum, and it's not plural nor dual. Hence, it is obviously only one entity speaking to the first group or party, as the verse continues. They said, minimum three, first party, which is the Arabic word alu. This is a third person masculine plural perfect verb. In other words, a minimum of three or more. And they say, we have been here one day or part of the day. Then the next group or the party speaks. They say, they say, minimum three, second party. Again, a third person masculine plural perfect verb. In other words, a minimum of three or more. Your Lord knows best how long we've stayed here. Remember, if you go back seven verses, in Surah 18 verse 12, it tells you the purpose as it said. Then we resurrected them to see which of the two parties could count the duration of their stay therein. Now, first and foremost, my Lord knows best their number. Therefore, logically, there is a speaker, minimum one, the first party, they said, minimum three, and the second party, they said, minimum three again. Therefore, 1 plus 3 plus 3 equals 7 minimum. And note, if you concatenate this number, which makes 133, it's divisible by the mathematical divisor of the Quran, 19, as said in Surah 74, verse 30. So, 133 divided by 19 equals 7. Therefore, it has to be a minimum of 7. And again, my Lord knows best their number. By the way, the second group had the correct answer, just as it says in Surah 18, verse 26. Say, God is the best knower of how long they stayed there. Now let's read what it says here in verse 22. They will say, there were three, their dog is the fourth among them. They also say five, their dog is the sixth among them. Guessing at the unseen, they also say seven, and their dog is the eighth among them. Say, my Lord knows best their number. None knows them except a few. Therefore do not argue with them except with an obvious argument. And do not inquire anyone amongst them, the Christians, about them, the sleepers. As you can see, seven is the logical answer, and we came to this by rationalizing the Arabic language, meaning using logical reasoning of the minimum terminology. I will continue here with the next verse on the left. So right, 18 verse 22, as it says, And do not say regarding anything, indeed I will do that tomorrow or in the future, without saying Inshallah, if God wills, now listen carefully, and remember your Lord when you forget and say, it may be that my Lord will guide me to what is closer than this rationally. Rashada. And note, Rashada is mentioned again as it means rationally. And of course, all the translations I read on this is incorrect because they put right way or right guidance instead of rationally. This one word changes the whole meaning of this verse and the whole concept of forgetting. All the translations I've read concerning this thinks forgetting is a bad thing. And on the contrary, if you remember your Lord and said this with the correct understanding, then it may be that your Lord will guide you to what is closer than that with logical reasoning, hence rationally. Therefore, forgetting, then remembering God, then saying that verse, Surah 18 verse 24, brought you to where you are for an important reason. And we will see the proof of this in the same surah, verse 60, which is right here in the center. So before I start this verse and prove that forgetting and then remembering God with that verse is a good thing, let's see how to say it in Arabic, for that is the way God wrote this reminder for us. <laughs> عسى أن يهديني ربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا. It may be that my Lord will guide me to what is closer than this rationally. Now let's see the truth behind forgetting. As it starts from Surah 18, verse 60. And when Moses said to his servant, I will not give up until I reach the point where the two seas meet, or else I will go on for ages. But when they reached between both points, they forgot their fish, and it took its way back to the sea, sneakily. Then when they passed beyond it, he said to his servant, 
bring us our breakfast. We have certainly met in this journey of ours. Fatigue, he said. Did you see when we took refuge on the rock? Then indeed, I forgot the fish, and no one made me forget it except Satan that I mentioned it. So Satan didn't make him forget it, but not to mention it. And it took its way into the sea, amazingly. He, so Moses said, that is what we were seeking. So Prophet Moses knew that it is not a bad thing to forget. So they went back to retracing their footprints. Now note carefully what is being said. They found a servant from among our servants whom we have given mercy from with us and we had taught him knowledge from ourselves. Listen carefully. Moses said to him, May I follow you that you may teach unto me of what you have been taught of rationalizing Rushda. This is again connecting to Rashada in another derived form. Now listen to what the special servant says. He said, Indeed, you will not be able to have patience with me. And how can you have patience to what you do not have the complete information concerning it? Again, And how can you have patience to what you do not have the complete information concerning it? Look what Moses says. He said, You will find me, inshallah, patient. You will find me if God wills patient just like it says before and I will not disobey your command therefore to have the best rationalizing skills you have to have the full knowledge of the topic he said then if you follow me then do not ask me about anything until I report it to you a reminder about it now I skipped to verse 78 because Prophet Moses forgot three times and if you don't know the story feel free to read it online at your own convenience and if you want me to translate it let me know inshallah now, let's see why Prophet Moses made those forgetful errors, as it says in Surah 18, verse 78. He said, This is the farewell between me and between you. I will inform you of the interpretations of what you were unable to have patience on. As for the boat, it was for poor people working in the sea, and I intended to render it defective, as there was a king coming after them who seized every ship forcibly. And as for the boy, his parents were believers, and we feared that he was going to burden them with transgression and disbelief. So we intended that their Lord would substitute for them one better than him in cleansing and closer in affection. As for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city. Under it, there was a treasure for them, and their father was righteous. So your Lord intended that they reach their maturity that bring forth their treasure as a mercy from your Lord. I did none of it on my own volition. This is the interpretation of what you were unable to have patience on. First, you need to know that the special servant whom Prophet Moses met is not human. Now, I'll show you how to rationalize this by God's will. The first hint is God letting us know this in verse 65, as it says here. They found a servant from among our servants, whom we have given mercy from with us, and we taught him knowledge from ourselves. So a servant from among our servants can be argued that we are all God's servants as well, so that could make him human. And we have given mercy from with us. It can also mean he is a human because all prophets and messengers are a mercy from God. But then, God informs us, we taught him knowledge from ourselves. Ourselves here is the Arabic word, ladunna. This is the first clear hint, but not a clear proof. Then here, Surah 18, verse 80 to 81, when he gives the logical reasoning for killing the boy, he says, As for the boy, his parents were believers, and we feared that he was going to burden them with transgression and disbelief, so we intended that their Lord would substitute for them one better than him in cleansing and closer in affection. So here he uses the we term, as being connected with angels, as the term we is used in reference to God and the angels in certain places in the Quran, but not all the we's. This is the second hint, but it can still be an exception. That was also the second time Prophet Moses forgot, and we are now at the third instance, but let's read the verse that mentions that, which is not here on the document. So Surah 18, verse 77. 
So they set out, until when they came to the inhabitants of a town, and they asked for food from its inhabitants, but they refused to host them. They then found therein a wall about to collapse, so he set it straight, fixed it. He said, Moses, you could have taken a payment for it. Prophet Moses again forgot and disobeyed his command. Do not ask him about anything until he reports it to him, a reminder about it. Now the final hint here, which is the third hint, thus proving he is an angel or a spirit, as God knows best, is because they were asking for food. Now how does that connect him being an angel or spirit? Because angels or spirits do not eat food. Now what's the proof that angels do not eat food is here. Surah 51 verse 24. Has it come to you, the history of Abraham's honorable guest? Then in Surah 11 verse 69. And certainly when our messengers came to Abraham with the good news, they said, Peace. He said, Peace. He did not delay to bring a roasted calf. Also in Surah 51 verse 25 says, They visited him, saying, Peace. He said, Peace, unknown people. Then in Surah 51 verse 26, He then went towards his family, then came with a fat calf. In verse 27, He then placed it before them. He said, Do you not eat? This is Surah 11 verse 70 says, But when he saw that their hands did not reach it, he felt negative of them, and felt the stress of fear from them. They said, Have no fear. We are indeed being sent to the people of Lot. As you can see, Prophet Abraham is again being mentioned to logically reason, rationalize, whether they are humans or angels or spirits. And in Surah 22 verse 75 says, God chooses from the angels, messengers, as well as from among mankind. God is indeed hearer, seer. Therefore, back to Prophet Moses and the special servant, or this angel, the human form, who knew that the inhabitants of the town were not going to host them any food. And he also knew this because he already knew that there was a treasure hidden under the wall that he fixed. As we read in Surah 18 verse 82, most importantly, he knew Moses was hungry and this would give away his identity of an angel or spirit. Prophet Moses was hungry from the beginning when they forgot their fish. And the whole point of the fish in the beginning was to eat it. Now the reason why I'm saying this can also be a spirit is because of Saint Mary. Prophet Jesus' mother, here from Surah 19, verse 17 to 19, as it says, She then took from beside them a hijab, a veal. We then sent to her our spirit. He then appeared to her in the form of a well-proportioned human. She said, Indeed, I seek refuge in thee, gracious, from you, if you are God-fearing. He said, I am only a messenger of your Lord, that I may grant you a cleansed son. So that's why you have the possibility still available, but nonetheless, he is not human. Note, there was three hints for the servant not being human, whom Prophet Moses wanted to follow so he can teach him more about rationalizing. Prophet Moses had three chances before the farewell between them. Therefore, in connection to the Salat contact prayer, page 3, God consistently uses the plural tense of a minimum of three, Surah 2 verse 125 and Surah 22 verse 26 concerning the Taifs. Akifs, the kneelings and the prostrations. Since Surah 22 verse 78 clearly informs us that there is no hardship in the judgment, the religion of your father Abraham. Hence, the known minimum is in favor rather than an unknown maximum, along with the Quranic proofs above of how many they were. Here at the bottom, you have the logics of the minimum plural of Surah 2 verse 125 repeated three times in green. And in Surah 22 verse 26 was repeated three times in green as well. This is why the plural perfectly connects with the three time frames and their three names and all the other triple connections. This completes page 6. And remember, God knows best. By the way, here is a triliteral root of Ra Shin Dal, which connects to the word Rashada, rationalize. It occurs 19 times in the Quran in seven derived forms. In case you want to know more about rationalizing, pause the screen because we are going to page 7, the Qibla, direction of the contact prayer, proof and reasoning, inshallah. And before that, we have surely given Abraham his rationalism, for we were fully acknowledged about him.